Out here, if you get ill, you stay at home. You take your chances on survival. Many don't. Medical care costs money, and they haven't got any. The villagers don't know what's wrong with her, but she's been getting weaker and weaker for weeks. The family has no proper food to give her. Scattered around all the villages we visited, we always found someone barely gripping onto life. She's sick. This one. The chances of surviving serious illness in Zimbabwe's rural communities is virtually nil. This isn't the starvation of, say, Ethiopia two decades ago, but it's a slow-moving killer. There's simply not enough maize being grown to feed millions of people. Out here, in the northwest of Zimbabwe, if aid agency food doesn't arrive, they barely eat, surviving on plants and crushed mangoes. So that is, that would, that's it. The food yes. stores are empty. Empty. Empty, bag, empty no meal, meal, no meal. When was the last time you had Lily. Oh, two weeks ago. Two weeks? Yes. That's the last time you had a proper dinner? Yes. yes. Okay. And when will, when will you get the next supply? Uh, no idea? No. They are starving. When, we, when I say starving, I say 99% of the people are starving. There are no seeds, there are no food, there is no food, all of them. Yeah. They are suffering. So we are really looking for a big help, so that we may be helped, so that we may go to the food. And if you don't help this by giving us seeds and maize, it means next year we are going to have double hunger. And we are going to suffer more than we are doing. The commercial silos that kept the food that fed this country and much of southern Africa are empty. Driving through the countryside, it's hard to imagine that just a few years ago, the fields would have been filled with crops. Instead, meagre shoots poke through the earth. The people here have been able to plant some maize, but they are untreated seeds. The result is that the yield will be very, very low. Perhaps worse, that yield isn't due until February next year. Until then, they've got absolutely nothing. Roots, eh? yes, there are some roots, eh? That's why she's digging for roots to make soup. The lack of food, though, isn't as random as it seems. The government can't supply enough for certain, but some communities where the opposition is strong are cut out of the distribution system. Only the party faithful get food. But even that is limited. You couldn't get anything to put in this thing here because one, they had no time to do, go to the fields. They were always called for rallies and useless rallies and uh, murdering of people. They, they would be running away all the time. No time to go to the fields. Shortage of fertilizer. Shortage of fertilizer, shortage of seeds, shortage so of the so far, of drawing mm -hmm. power. Plowing. So all those things gathered together has caused this intolerable trouble. With the collapse of the farming system, everyone now needs food. Away from the major cities where even their supplies are short, there's nothing. Only foreign aid will keep these people going, at least until the next harvest. And that's three months away. Stuart Ramsey, Sky News. Zimbabwe. Ah.